I am scented foam, a traveler of the fragrant space-time. Today, we're going on a journey through the night sky. What does the night sky evoke? What feelings? What thoughts? Is it a starry night with blinking stars full of wishes that may potentially be coming true? Is it a sparkly ceiling for a romantic or a pensive walk? A mysterious host to constellations that may predict our future? Or a reminder of the chaotic darkness that surrounds us? During these very dark times for the world, it may very well be a reminder of how small we are. Today, I will be exploring perfumes that create associations with the night sky. I have come to the conclusion that the contrast between darker and brighter elements may very well do the trick. Enter my fragrant starry spaceship and of course, enjoy. Lemon, grapefruit, and all the sour citruses give to the blends a vibrant quality, which when combined with earthier aspects, create this contrast that reminds me of the game's light plays in the dark of the night. Neroli Outre Noir by Guerlain. Here you come. This perfume begins with a clean and somehow musky bitter citrus quality. You just spray it. I can detect the tea note quite distinctly, adding a herbal greenness to the perfume, which when combined with the crushed leaf quality of the Petit Grain results to a very soothing and relaxing effect. The sour and sharp edges of the lemon and grapefruit subside and become smoother with time as the floral aspects bloom, the neroli and the orange flower. But what makes this perfume so interesting, in my opinion, and unique, is that somewhere within this luminous space it creates a darker and earthier and warm facet, like a resinous quality, and some smoke interferes, giving this contrast that reminds me of the night sky, the starry night sky. It is spring in the Mediterranean land and all the, the bitter orange trees have bloomed. And you, you are walking underneath the beautiful starry ceiling. This is what Neroli Oudre Noir by Guerlain evokes to me. Aldehydes, from what I've read, are a family of organic compounds that can be found in various elements like the rose, the citronella and the cinnamon, but they can also be made in the lab. Each type of aldehyde offers a different scent and a different effect in the fragrance. Some feel more herbal and green, some others feel rosy and citrusy, some others feel waxy and metallic, and some feel soapy and clean. Now, my personal impression of aldehydes and fragrance, I have yet to discover more, is a bit more abstract. To me, it is a note that adds the qualities of the air we breathe somehow. It offers an open perception to the sky, an idea of the vast universe. I know that this sounds very poetic. My point is that for me, when aldehydes come in touch with earthier aspects in a fragrance, they make the perfume sparkle. Chanel, Number five, the old version, low, ready for takeoff. Chanel, number five, the old version, is for me a minimalistic fragrance which offers an effortless simplicity without forgetting to manifest the fine lines of its creation. It carries, of course, quite a big amount of citric elements. It has oranges, mandarin oranges, lime, lemon, bergamot, and all these citric qualities combined with the aldehydes give to this perfume sparkly 
radiant and spirited effect. It feels to me like a combination of air and celestial elements. With time, the perfume becomes muskier and all the notes feel so very smoothly blended that you can no longer detect and even forget the compounds. It is this sleek, shiny, effervescent and modern and futuristic take on the classic number five. It feels like having a spatial quality about it. I associate it with the essence of SARS. Chanel number no. five, the old version. The combination of the zesty quality of oranges along with the warm resinous amber gives me the impression of the twinkling feel. And thus, I bring you Orange Bitters by Jo Malone. This perfume feels exactly like when you peel a nice juicy orange in order to consume it. All the aromas that result from the cutting of the orange skin, which are both sweet and bitter, hit your nose when you spray Bitter Oranges by Jo Malone. The orange and the bitter orange quality in here are very intense. This perfume awakens your senses. It feels like little star explosions in your mind. With time, the warm and ambery facet of this fragrance, which you will only perceive if you wear it on your skin, absorbs the bright orange aspects and re-releases them again. So the light comes and goes throughout its whole wear, creating the twinkling of stars effect. This perfume is is beautiful for yourself, but also for bringing the twinkling starry night inside your house by spraying the air with it. It's a beautiful, awakening and refreshing fragrance by Jo Malone. An honorable mention in this section to my beloved Eau de Merveille by Hermes, which also contains celestial elements and stardust. Pajuli might be an earthy note, but for me, it offers a shady quality to perfumes. It feels like a game of darkness and light on a shiny surface with its sharp uh, minty aspects, which usually balance sweeter blends and offer another olfactive dimension to the fragrances. So it was inevitable. I had to bring Angel, Etoile des Rêves in this fragrant discussion by Mugler. This flanker has a beautiful bottle round with embossed stars on it and it looks like a little planet. And I have to thank my dear fragrant friend Knives from Belgium for this beautiful gift. The perfume is almost identical to the original Angel. I can detect this beautiful rich and golden honey nuance along with beautiful milk chocolate aspect and the characteristic patchouli of angel which is minty, oily, shady. It's beautiful. As Thierry Mugler, who is now watching us from the vast infinity, has said about angel, I want something mouth-watering and tasty which reminds me of childhood. The scent of a fairground, candy floss, little cakes, chocolates and caramels. Perfume must not be linked just to fashion because that means that one day it will go out of style. They say that if you could be on top of a star, you could see how Earth looked in the past. Maybe I'm stretching it a little bit. But perhaps if we now look at the sky, we will find a star that looks exactly like Mugler's childhood fairground. We will now be exploring perfume-wise the darkness of the night. 
the sunless dim part of the universe where light does not exist, a fragrant black hole. Eau du soir by Cicely. This perfume feels to me like the potion of the night. With first spray, I get a tender oak moss and patchouli scent and a dark rose essence along with a creamy carnation all masterfully blended. There is no sharpness, no thorns. This feels to me more delicate than the 90s first version of this brand. There is also mandarin orange and grapefruit in here. It feels to me that these bright aspects try to win over the darker aspect, but it is a lost battle quite from the beginning. So they are lurking somewhere in the background like a faint memory of light. I think that this perfume is a masterpiece because of this specific trait. It may be dark, but it is tranquil like the serenity that someone may find in silence and solitude. It is dark, spicy, floral, austere, mossy. It is the fragrance of a creature of the night. Absolutely beautiful, dark, masterfully done fragrance. Eau du Soir by Cicely. Esthesis of the moon. Fragrances like MFK's Aqua Universalis and Gentle Fluidity Silver could also be very, very fitting for this section. But I have brought to you Moonlight and Heaven by Killian Paris in this beautiful travel size bottle. Moonlight and Heaven is an iridescent, tropical, and romantic beauty. It is not very easy to describe because it bears elements from different aromatic categories. It feels to me edible and fresh at the same time, also creamy and fruity, and it also has a natural aesthetic about it. So with first spray, I get a combination of tropical fruits, coconut and rice cream. There are sweet, powdery and sour aspects that exist simultaneously in a glistening, shiny feel. With time, it becomes even more creamy and satin-like. Tides are known to occur due to the gravitational pull of the moon. This fragrance brings to me the unearthly aesthetics of a pastel blue beach after the tide, found in another planet, exotic looking and unreal, with pragmatic elements and sublime qualities that coexist. I can't detect the fragrance the whole day when I have it on, and it is very long lasting and distinct. A beautiful perfume, Moonlight in Heaven by Killian Paris. When oud is light and smooth, it gives to the fragrances a glossy dimension. When combined with tangy spices like cardamom and nutmeg and a citrus shine, the twinkling feel gets even more intense. Oud Bleu Intense by Fragrance du Bois. I have talked again about this fragrance and I am sure I will talk more about it because it's one of the most unique and intriguing fragrances I have ever. So in the context of this theme, the starry theme, with the first whiff, I get a multidimensional impression of brightness, warmth and luxurious woods. The base layer of this fragrance is very thick and balsamic with a golden amber aesthetic and there's also a radiant citrus feel, so masterfully braided on top of the resins and woods. The olfactive transition from the citrus orange glaze to the rich and opulent woody quality from the oud 
results to this unsurpassed flickering ecstasies of a clear night sky with infinite stars you can wish upon. Somewhere within this luscious symphony, you can also get a discreet sea breeze which feels like the tickling memory of a summer night you have not yet experienced. This is such a magnificent fragrance with an outstanding longevity and projection. Beautiful Oud Bleu Intense by Fragrance du Bois. Pepper, with its hot and bracing scent, gives a bright accent to fragrances and when combined with the sweet and warm vanilla note, it makes things glitter. Thus, I have brought to you Nuit et Confidence by Amic Goutal. This perfume is a sparkly, fluffy combination of vanilla, sugar and tonka bean. There's also bergamot in this fragrance, which offers a light and airy quality. It has no astringent or sour side, but it offers a fresh, uplifting side. The sensation you get with the fragrance is feathery. It feels like vanilla flaws and dreams, and it also has a glittery playfulness from the spicy pepper. I get the image of a hot balloon traveling in the night sky, very close to the stars. And in this dream, you may also catch a star and keep it in your pocket until your wish comes true. I haven't tested the longevity and projection properly, only with a sample. I think I need to get a bottle very soon because I enjoy this perfume very much. Nuit et Confidence by Coutal Paris. this night sky fragrant journey with a myth written by Hesiod thousands of years ago and two fragrances to honor this myth. From chaos came forth Erebus and black night, but of night were born Ether and Day, whom she conceived and bore from union and love with Erebus, and earth first bore star Uranus, equal to herself to cover her on every side and to be an ever sure abiding place for the blessed gods. So, in fragrance form, Uranoche and Gea by Jardin de France. We begin with Uranoche ou Celeste by Jardin de France, which is NEDP. This is a citrus woody aromatic fragrance which features the note of citron which has a very plethoric bitter citrus quality and it also has myrtle which has sweet and herbal green aspects. It is a fragrance that evokes hot spring images, clean towels and very high-end bath products in the same vein as Au Thé Vert by the House of Bulgari. The citrus aspects are very luscious and they give a transparent, diaphanous and ethereal quality to this perfume. Gea au Mythique, on the other hand, it is also an EDP, is an earthier and more powdery fragrance with the notes of iris and vetiver. It feels somehow rooty and sweet. It also has a bitter orange quality and with time it becomes cleaner and muskier. I did a little experiment. I asked three different people to choose between the two without seeing which one it was, which fragrance would represent the deity who rules the kingdom of heaven. And all three chose Uranosh. So the name of the fragrance is very, very accurate. Our fragrant journey to this starry night has come to an end. I hope you enjoyed the ride among the stars. I'm sure you managed to catch a star and put it in your pocket. May it shine for you as you wish. Until my next video, I send you a luminous hug. The sky grew darker. 
paint his blue on blue, one stroke at a time, into deeper, deeper shades of night.